In this section, we'll talk about a few key security terms as well as two modes ASP.NET supports for security that can be used to secure internet and intranet applications. So let's start off by talking about a couple terms that you might run across. So the first is authentication. You've logged into a website and you typically supply username and password and you're proving who you are. So that would be authentication. Authorization. Well, just because you get into a website and log in successfully doesn't mean you'll see all aspects of that web application. There may be an administrator site, an editor area, or approval area that you have to be a member of a specific group or role as a user in order to be able to see those. So that would be authorization. What rights do you have and what actions are you allowed to perform as a user? Then the final one listed here is impersonation. This would be where you'll log in as you, but then behind the scenes, ASP.NET might actually run as a different account, maybe because that specific account has rights to hit a database versus your account doesn't. So sometimes you might impersonate and run under a different account once a user is logged in, so you can get to some back-end processes. You can even use, the, use this to elevate privileges and perform very specific custom actions that the default user can't do on their own. So there's a lot of things you can do with that, and then typically once you're done impersonating, you'll do something called unimpersonate and resort back to the standard user account. Now ASP.NET supports two types of security modes that can be used for authentication, authorization, or even impersonation. So the first is forms authentication, the second is windows authentication. Now forms authentication is more of an internet based type of authentication versus Windows authentication is typically used for intranet applications. Now it doesn't have to be though. You could certainly use forms authentication internally within a company if you'd like. So let's talk about each of those and explain the differences and how they work. So forms authentication, it's typically used with a custom database that stores users and maybe even roles. So this would be anything with custom tables that you want to query so that when a user goes to a web page to log in, you'll write a query against the database and then get back results saying whether or not the username and password is found. That's the standard way, but it doesn't have to be a database. It could be a custom XML file or some other type of structure that you want to store users in. So the way it works is this is more internet based authentication and you can even do authorization with this as well. So what will happen is if a user goes to a page they don't have rights to, they'll automatically be redirected to a login screen. Now that'll happen as a result of some configuration code you can add into web.config, your website's config file. Now once they've logged in, if it's successful, they'll be issued something called an authentication token. Now this is basically a nice little cryptographically secure token that'll be stored in a cookie or it can be stored up in the URL in case they have cookies turned off. And what this does is now every time they hit another page, that cookie or the information up in the URL will be passed to that page. ASP.NET can then verify the authentication token, make sure it's valid, make sure it hasn't been tampered with, and then let the user in or block them. It's a very secure technique that's actually been in place for nearly 10 years now. Very, very secure and works very well. Now behind the scenes it actually relies on a class in the system.web.security namespace called forms authentication and it has a method on it called set cookie and you can call that if you actually want to set this authentication token and that'd be used in cases where you want to write some custom code to authenticate a user maybe against your own custom database as an example. And as mentioned all of this is configured in web.config. Now, I mentioned that forms authentication is typically used in internet scenarios, but it's very possible you might mix and match pieces from both worlds, Windows and forms authentication. And for instance, you might log in a user through Windows authentication, but then add roles to that user using forms techniques. So we'll talk about Windows authentication here next. So Windows authentication is actually the easiest to get in place. There's nothing you have to do in web.config out of the box because it's the default authentication mechanism. Now Windows authentication is very easy and, and the reason is that the operating system itself on the server once it's passed the user credentials it will take care of validation so you have to write no programming code out of the box 
to authenticate a user. So when the user hits a web page, one of two things generally happens if it's Windows authentication. If the browser set up to use pass-through authentication, then their Windows credentials they logged in to Windows with or any other operating system they have will automatically be passed through, assuming it supports one of the Windows authentication technologies. The different technologies are listed here. You can see BASIC, NTLM, Digest, and Kerberos. BASIC is what it says. It's the most basic. And what happens is the username and the password are passed in clear text over the network. So oftentimes when BASIC authentication is used, you'll see HTTPS up on the URL because it uses SSL behind the scenes to encrypt the traffic over the network. Now what will happen is an administrator typically will simply go and right click on a folder or a file, they'll go to properties and then go to the security tab to add in the users or the groups or roles. They have access to that folder or page. And so what will happen is the client makes a request. If pass throughs on, their credentials are passed through and if they're valid, IIS, Internet Information Services, the web server, will forward that request on to ASP.NET. If they're not valid, ASP.NET doesn't actually have to see it. Your code will never get hit uh, itself. If pass-through is not enabled, then they'll be prompted with that gray dialog that you've likely seen if you work internally in a company, and they'll have to enter a username and password or possibly domain username and password. And then the same process applies. IAS then takes that, authenticates against something like Active Directory or another LDAP directory services uh, store, and if it's valid, your code would then be invoked, and then you can get to the username, you can get to the user's roles or groups they're in, and all that type of stuff. So that is what Windows authentication is, and that's why it's typically used for intranet scenarios because we don't really want to add people outside of the company into our Active Directory, although in some cases you might for extranet type scenarios. But that's the difference between uh, Windows authentication which is more intranet versus forms authentication, which is more web-based, uses standard web technologies to secure. Let's take a look at the difference between forms authentication versus Windows authentication from the end user perspective. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project and we'll create an ASP.NET web application and we'll simply call this forms authentication demo and I'll go ahead and save this to a security folder. Alright, so out of the box you'll notice that if I click on View Browser, we have a login area. And we can go in and register and do all that type of thing. And that's the standard way with Forms Authentication that you would actually go to log in. So we'd have to go in and register. This will take a second to generate because behind the scenes this will actually create a database for us. Not too bad. And you'll notice that we're now logged in and now we can get to any site that's been secured. So that would be what forms authentication looks like. If we log out then of course we'll have to go back to our login page to get to any secured site. So that's pretty standard what most people are used to out on the internet. Now we can compare that with Windows authentication. So in this one I'm just going to create an empty site and we'll say Windows authentication demo. And you'll notice in web config first off there's nothing specific to the security mode. Now by default though it's actually using Windows authentication. And I'll show you how we can change that later in this module. So to start I'm going to add a page. And let's call it default.aspx. and we'll say you made it. Now if I run it as is we haven't turned on any authentication at the server level so you notice I can get right to the page. But if I right click on my project come down to properties and come over to web this will allow me to get into the port settings plus I can say I'd like to use Windows NTLM authentication. Now, if I save this, 
and we'll try to go back to the page. You'll notice that I'm now prompted to enter credentials. If I hit cancel, I can't even get into the page at all. So my code is never touched at this point. Let's go ahead and refresh. I'll go ahead and log in. And now you notice I made it into the page. So this would be useful in situations where you have something like an Active Directory set up and your users throughout your company are already stored in that because now I can go in and I could actually secure this specific page if I wanted. So we could come in to the application itself. We'll pretend that this is where it lives on a real server. We can come into default ASPX. We can right click and go to properties, go to security. And now I can actually come into here and we can edit which users or groups are allowed to get in. Now you'll notice I'm already allowed to at this point, but if we hit add, we could certainly add other users or other groups in our Active Directory. And what's nice about this is an administrator, if you have that in your company, can automatically handle all this for you as long as they know about the appropriate security and the groups or users that should get to the page. So that would be the difference between using forms authentication, which you can see is definitely more internet looking type authentication versus Windows authentication in an ASP.NET application.